Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 18 of this Let's Play Victoria 2. This is the German Empire. We are the army with a state. And in the last episode, we were just building up our economy. We have got some more tax reforms in, which has allowed us to drop our tariffs down to 0%. It's also allowed us to drop our taxes quite a lot. Although, I'm going to tax the rich more because you're buying a lot of luxuries right now, buddies. You're also worth so much money. It's crazy. I'd like to earn a bit of money because I want to keep my budget above 100k if I can. Oh, sorry, my surplus above 100k if I can. And yes, you have become friendly, which is irritating Russia. Definitely want to beat the Russians there. Oh, Persia. We can add you to our sphere. Thank you for the cheap cotton exports. Very much obliged to you. Marvellous. And there we go immediate impact on our factories and immediate impact on our income excellent because once they're in your sphere you get uh, direct access to any materials that they are exporting before anyone else so their cotton which they produce is then sold to us first which means our factories get more of it which means they become more productive it's a very important and Poland we can also increase our opinion here we are now friendly and we have the military statistics. Excellent. Now, I believe there is a little trick that you can do, whereby any technology that you have, like, set in here until the end is saved up. And I'm kind of gambling that we will be able to save up enough technology in here to almost immediately get the 1970 tech. I think that's how it works, if memory serves. The Austrian menace, as everyone knows... Okay, we've got that one again. How long until that's actually good? Oh, we're close. We're very close. And we've just become second militarily as well. Um, no, we're going to have to mobilize as soon as war breaks out. And we probably will need to mobilize for this one. So I'm not that worried about the Dutch. In fact, the Austrian army is kind of crappy too. Um, we'll see. And there we go. We have, a, we have gained the Acquire State CV against Austria. It is time for war. So. Declare war. Acquire state. We want Bohemia. Are we going to need to call the Alpha? We might as well. We're going to lose nothing by doing so. And yep. We are going to have to zoop you to the top. We're going to have to add tariffs now to pay for this. So... Factories, I hope you enjoyed your time tariff-free, although that almost immediately pays for most of this war. And the rich, you're going to have to pay towards this too. And the middle class as well. We actually got a... wow. We're, our economy is a lot stronger than I'd realised. The Ottomans have joined, Switzerland said no, Sweden joined, Denmark joined, and the UK joined. Excellent. And the Dutch have joined too. We're going to wait and see where the Dutch come. Combat loss evaluation schemata. By counting losses on both sides and turning figures into a matrix, it was possible to estimate losses in upcoming combat in advance. Gives us even more organisation, more supply consumption. More supply consumption means it's more expensive. Look, we're spending 1,700 on our army right now, which is not cheap. We're definitely squeezing the rich a little bit there. They're getting less of their luxuries now. Poor dears. Let's go up to 40% on the middle class and 45 on the poor. They can hold at that level for quite a long time. Okay, so you guys are actually starting to siege us, which is annoying. So these defensive armies, we're going to push you forwards. Whoops. And the armies that I have over here in the Netherlands... We'll have you come here and here. We'll send We'll have you come over here to deal with the Austrians. We still haven't mobilized, so I'm not entirely convinced that we're gonna need to. I mean the Austrians have. But it's gonna be my entire military versus the Austrians. Oh, there's a crisis brewing. between 
The liberation of Belarus. Against Russia, I assume. An alliance offer from Persia. Yes. An alliance offer from Switzerland. Yes. Okay, that's the British beating the Dutch. Good. This is us beating the Dutch. Good. Crisis was averted. Now, my armies are really strong compared to theirs, I think. Right, are you combat attacky person? You are... Oh, it's Bromney. Yeah, you definitely are. Battle of Cleves is over. Marvellous. And now they just have a couple of tiny little armies, which quite frankly aren't really worth much. Now this is a commerce raider right there, versus Dutch men of war, so the British Navy here should absolutely kick their ass. Speaking of which, I did promise to talk about the differences in their stats. So right now, men of war, attack of 9, hull of 4, firing range of 58. Commerce raider, on the other hand, has less attack, but more hull. And hull is important because that is the number of hit points. You will lose more men of war in a conflict than you will commerce raiders. And then finally, max speed. Five kilometers per hour faster than the men of war. Like, they're even faster than the frigates. And the frigates are like your light attack ships at this stage. And have double the hull. So once you start getting these steamships, they're, they're so much stronger. So much stronger. Very, very much worth getting. Okay, you've taken that already. Go to Olomouc. You go to Prague. You go to Alsing. You guys are attacking here. That's good. I need to make sure the Austrians don't attack my artillery units up here. Because they'll be kind of owned on their own. But my troops are just... My armies are so much stronger than theirs. Um, let's go and hit them. That's your guys. Dying. Olmich has fallen. Let's go here. Now, how good are you attacking? Oh, you are, in fact, a ge an attacking general. In that case, let's go after the Austrians there. Augsburg has fallen. Bulow is a defensive general. Let's go here. Okay, you've done your job. Let's go here. And through here. I thought it was actually closer than I expected it would be. We lost Carlsbad, but that's fine. Right, how are our armies holding up here? Our, arm, our armies are so strong compared to theirs. Uh, let's go into here. And then you lot can just keep on taking territory, which is lovely. Salzburg's fallen. Where is Vienna? There. Okay, we'll move towards it. That is a big stack, and that's in Munich, which is hills, which gives them a one defensive bonus. Um, yeah, once we finish this battle, I think we'll shift our troops up there. I mean, the quality of our troops here is really showing through. I mean, if this was a long protracted war, we could not manage with these number of losses. Or rather, they, they, they would just outproduce us. No, no wrong words. They would simply just have more bodies to throw at a fight than us. But right now, because our armies are so overwhelmingly strong compared to theirs, we're doing just fine. Let's go beat the Dutch up. Attack commenced. Oh, we're doing double the damage that they are. Oh, man, their forts are falling so quickly. Like even I'm even surprised by how quick they're falling here. Battle of Munich, that was a big victory. Six war score. Let's go here. Let's just start occupying the mountains while they can't do anything to defend. Uh, yeah, you've got them there. Ammunition area effect calculations by making statistical standard measurements of how much ammunition was needed to give the right effect against a predefined size of enemy unit in a predefined square area, combat became much more cost efficient. And yeah, it's made it more expensive. <laughs> but that's fine. Alright, so... With the way that we are spanking them right now... Can I add war goals? We require 7% jingoism, so I, I'm hoping that as we thrash them harder, we get more jingoism. I hope. I don't know for sure. You 
to go and support the Swedes over there because they are throwing more and more men in. And wow, you are an amazing general. Plus five defense, that's insane. And now our entire unit gets that. <laughs> they lost almost 30,000 men to our 5,000. That was a really good result for us. Like, really good. Ah, Vienna. I can finally go for it. Magnificent. Uh, you guys just keep on advancing. They just... Their forts are rubbish. Or else my um, recon is really good, which is also possible. Uh, you go and beat the Dutch army again. Now, nope, still can't. Ulm's fallen. Oh, Palmer's an enemy. I didn't realise that. The Conservatives have lost 14%. The Liberals have gained 7 Social Man, socialists are really growing. Liquidization of assets. This meant that a bankrupted firm got its assets sold to pay the money lenders. This was a complex but important set of laws that was the first step to disable jurisdiction for bankruptcies. January 1st, 1870. I would like to have... Oh, we already have breech-loaded guns. We just don't have colonial ne negotiations. What are we lacking? Oh, we need to have machine guns to get this. Because it starts off as 0%, and you need to add more points from the other stuff. So yes, if we have naval guns, economic responsibility, or naval logistics, then we get a chance. We're going to get machine guns. Which hugely increases the defense of your guards and your infantry. Like, this is when defensive warfare really takes over. Like, it was already good here, now it takes over. Machine guns, let's go. You thought the Prussian army up to this point was bad. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. And there we go, Vienna has fallen. The Battle of Zwolle. Good stuff. Let's go for Arnhem. Apparently there was a battle of Arnhem. Let's shift you guys up to attack those two. You're taking that. You're taking that. Good. Uh, no, you go and attack them. Wait. We have an army over here? How long have you been there? Jeez, sorry guys. <laughs> Yay, finding random troops. Hooray. Oh, this is going to be such a squish. Cholera spreads. One minute he's walking, talking normally, and the next he clutches his stomach, dashing to the general direction of the outhouse. There's only really one explanation. You was out drinking last night? Yeah, Romney's getting more and more experience, which is magnificent. Then we'll have you attack them, I think. Meanwhile, Sweden's under attack, so let's go and support the Swedes again. You guys need to continue pushing forwards. All right, Austria. Still can't do it. We're at 66% now. Damn it. Oh, yeah, jingoism is definitely growing. Okay, cool. Austria's offering me peace. I'm not ready for peace yet. Thanks. Actually, you come over here to Salzburg, and you, Bromney, you are. You come over to here to launch it, and then we'll go and attack them. And then you come here. You're leaving one small army. Oh, no, stay there. Okay, you've moved there, you attack there. Uh, you apparently have additional troops. You're coming over there, you can attack that. You guys are all busy. Oh, you two aren't. Even though Bromley is outnumbered, you should win this one. Though you are on a minus two, terrain and crossing. But my armies are just so much stronger than yours. And then we have reinforcements ready to come in. Right now, in fact. Multitude of financial instruments. The introduction of a multitude of financial instruments meant not only a smoother flow of capital, but also the middle class got a better return on the private investments. Cool. 
down to 60k. So we did a good thing making sure that we had so much cash in reserve. You go and attack them. You're probably not needed, honestly. Although... No, you come over here. You come over here. You come over here. Right, now can I please add war goals? Nearly. How hard do we need to be smashing them? I mean, it might even be worth building like a death stack. So Bromley's troops right now, whoops. No, oh, the Swedes are there too. I was like, why am I taking additional attrition here? Um, just where our best offensive general is, and then that's what we use to punch through enemy lines. Because eventually it will become lines. It'll become more like Heart of Iron. I mean, not quite to the point where you have a front with battle plans and everything, but you will have, like, a whole line of troops just holding, and then you're kind of probing and trying to push through. That's really when the defensive war warfare kicks off. But thanks to the fact that we haven't had to mobilize means that we have not lost many troops, or many uh, population. Which is really strong for us. Drying techniques. By drying food, the durability increased tenfold and food as a commodity became easier to sell. More production output for tea, coffee, and opium. Alright, can I please add a war goal? Nearly. Are oh, the Poles at war with Austria as well? Oh, you're just capitalizing on the damage I'm doing to them. But fair enough. I can't really fault you for that. Alright, you go and kill them because they're annoying me. Unless you're a better attack commander. Uh, technically, yes. You go to Gior, you go to there. Is that Bromney? It is. Uh, you may as well start actually just taking some territory now. Look, the Ottomans are fighting the Austrians, which is good to see. The Austrians really want peace. Oh, I forgot to check if machine guns actually started way ahead, but judging by how much of it we have, I'm going to say yes. What are we at? 6.3. Come on. Like, I'm not sure how much more we can be kicking their asses here. Lockout. Unconstitutional. You two have taken that stuff. I mean, that's going to annoy the Poles, because I think that's probably what the Poles are after. Cure. Move down there. Actually, speaking of these things, I have totally forgotten about this stuff. And that is why it's dangerous. So we need to really very quickly ban Russia, because you are 4% away from stealing the Ottomans from me. Piss off. Mine. And... Poland. Have we been discredited or something here? We have. Okay. Persia's in our sphere, though, and I think we can back off on that. Okay. Now, can I please... <sighs> no, wait, that's the wrong country. I'm a little bit worried that you'll instantly get a peace if you hit 100%. I have a feeling you do. Which would be irritating, to say the least. But then again, this dead easy war. Not exactly the worst of things. Oop, the Austrians have actually got an army again. Bromi, where are you? Is that you? It is. Go and deal with them, please. Oh, and you've gone into open terrain where I can fight you more easily. Thank you. It means I suffer less casualties. Very good of you. Much obliged. Oops. All right, can we please? Oh, has that gone backwards? That feels like it's gone backwards. 
and the Austrians are no longer a great power. Where is the source of the Nile? The Royal Geographic Society has announced that an award will be presented to the first explorer who determines the source of the Nile. We should outfit an expedition. Let's do it. All right, Bromley's forces are fighting there. Let's keep on. Oh crap! No, keep going, Pex. Sorry, sorry. Russia seems like they're in the war as well now. Nope, they're just passing over my lands. That's mine, Russia. Polish martyr. The hands on the clock point five minutes to twelve. His eyes peer to the town square, town square, seemingly undaunted by the commotion and the risk. He climbs to the podium and begins to speak. For hours he talks of the Polish nation, its opp oppression, its cause, and its future, in a language that reverberates with nothing save the clear tones of a just cause. The German gendarmes storm the square and soon he is gone. Somewhere, far away, in a city, a bell strikes twelve. A young Polish nationalist is in our custody. What should we do with him? All pops in Schlesen who are not North German gain consciousness or militancy. We'll imprison him. Oh man, can we please? 6.6. 6. Oh, Britain wants Sumatra. That might have been why it went backwards. My king, we have finished the research of the machine guns. Huzzah! And now that should allow us to, yeah, 25% towards colonial negotiations, at which point we will have a huge advantage in colonizing before the others, which hopefully will allow us to get a start in Africa before the others jump in. Actually, speaking of which, are there any technologies which increase colonial strength or speed or anything like that? That I don't remember. I have a feeling admin efficiency has something to do with it. And I'm going to have to check to make sure I... No, there we go. Colonial migration? I think that would help. Oh, that, that gives another 50% education efficiency? Shit, should have got that ages ago. Excuse my language. Uh, or steel railroad. No, no, we're going to get biologist biologialism for the Darwinism. Education efficiency plus fifty percent. Bugger. We should realise that. Okay, can we please steal some more land from you? Close, but no cigar. And the poles are stealing more and more of this territory, right from under us. Thankfully, their territories do fall very, very quickly, which is excellent. Keep going. Wrong option. How close? 6.7. What was the peace? We're at 100. No peace deal's been made yet. We'll wait a little bit longer. Machine gun ornament. The Gatling gun. Patented in 1861 by Richard Jordan Gatling was the first to offer controlled sequential fire with automatic loading. It first saw very limited action in the American Civil War, which never happened. So infantry, yeah, loads of defensive bonuses. Colonial negotiations, whatever happens, we have got the Maxim gun, and they have not. Machine guns allowed armies to devastate forces using mass charge tactics, an ability that was especially useful when it came to defending uncivilized nations, sorry, defeating uncivilized nations who objected to being colonized. And then Bessemer Steel, method not only clean iron The method not only clean iron during the process of making it into steel, but also not cleaned iron, but also allowed for the use of iron that earlier had been unusable because of its low grade. Cool. Um, right. Still can't. One. Oh, we're still building the uh, dockyard. Yeah, we are. Bugger. It's another year. 
All right. Um, that is definitely the closest to us, isn't it? Pretty sure. All right. Um, can I please add another war goal? Close. Oh, we have a couple of people here who are not doing anything right now. You're trying to take that territory back, which is annoying, but you're in the f mountain, so I can't really do much about you right now. You are coming down out of the mountains, though, into Treviso. That was a mistake. The local railway shares. A newly formed railway company is one of our states has issued shares in the company to help finance the burgeoning firm and are now seeking buyers and investors in the state. The CEO of the company has approached local politicians asking them if they could, perhaps, lend a bit of a hand in the marketing of these shares to the general public, arguing that an extension of the railway networks in the state can only be beneficial and should be promoted. Some feel that this might infringe on the principles of official neutrality with re regards to private ventures, while others see only opportunities. We gain a free railroad, or all pops lose a militancy. Um, I'll take the free railroads. Oh, so close, so close. You two go and attack that. You go to Zagreb. You guys take this. Aha. Uh, the Ottomans are taking that already. In that case, let's just head over here. All right. Attack commenced. So Bromley got there first. And we are doing way more damage to them. Plus, you should now see... Oh, no. It doesn't actually show you the combat stats. It's the fact that we have machine guns, and they almost certainly do not. Although, this is defensive, so it won't matter. Capitalists in one of our states have called a lockout following a period of intensifying labour conflicts in the area. Workers have been informed by management that no one is welcome back to work while union sympathies still run high in the unemployed. Sorry, in the employed. Local police have expressed support for the move, citing a long series of disturbances at the factory, some even bordering on sabotage. No. And I'm probably really confusing people with my constant back and foring. Trade unions are legal. Trade unions screwing people up is not. Right, can I please add a new war goal? Pretty please, with a sodding cherry on top. Free of charge, completely free. Battle of Treviso, we'll go and cut them off. Uh, we even got there first, which means I get the defensive bonus. And apparently that counts as me <laughs> digging in for like a day. One, is that a stack wipe? I do believe so. The Russians want access. Why? Oh, you're at war with Austria. Everyone's at war with Austria now. Um, peace with the Netherlands. That I can accept. Now I can add a sodding war goal. Should I have done that earlier? Don't know. I would like to acquire another state. Which will cost 11 in for me, which will bring me up to. 36. What's the maximum? It's like 25. I really shouldn't do this. No, I can't count. That's going to go up to 26. If I waited for that to burn down a little bit, I really, really should, um, then it would be a lot cheaper. Otherwise, you start... Bad things happen. It's like having too much bad boy in uh, EU4. It's not a good idea. Okay. Um, how quickly does it go down? Slowly. Very slowly. It's more than a year. Um, let's send our troops back home. I mean, like, Britain and the others might peace out in the meantime. That's fine. We've got this. Oh, yeah, I've got Addy over there. The Mud March. The Berlin weather did its worst against us. Mud, mud was its prominent feature, and it was known as afterwards as the Mud March. A female suffragette commented the 
elements during the Mad March, a demonstration march which, just this past week, attracted over 3,000 women from various organisations. Female textile workers, temperature advocates, artists and many other are all coming together in a show of force for women's liberation and suffrage on Berlin streets. A gay enough procession by most accounts, despite the weather. All pops gain conscientiousness, all become more liberal. Or political reform selected, meetings not allowed. No, no, we're going to express our cordial understanding of and support for these sentiments. I want everyone to become more liberal. Don't we have women's stuff already? Um, I'm not sure you can actually select it. I mean, everyone can vote. We have universal voting. Don't know. And this episode is going to go over slightly because I want to wait until we have what we want. Oh, you're kidding me. I can't get the walk. No, it's okay. Man, they're 12th. They are dropping fast. Yeah, we definitely want to acquire a state. Do they cost different amounts? No, they don't. Um, in fact, we should probably have a look at what we actually want. Uh, Moravia, probably. Probably. I have a feeling it has a high population. Nowhere near as much as Bohemia. In fact, West Galicia would probably be more. I don't know if we can take Osterreich, which is Austria. Tyrol? Uh, not hugely valuable. No gold here anymore. Yeah, I think it's going to be Moravia. So we're going to try and take Bohemia and Moravia. Okay, so, except for split, I think that's everything now occupied. Swedes are taking that one province back, I know we, we still need to take that bit. Cool. Oh, do we want to go 0.5 over? Oh, I'm going to regret this, aren't I? You know what, I'm going to save it and see how much I regret it. <laughs> and then in the next episode you will know whether I've chosen to revert to this save or not. Because <laughs> I'll just fast forward through time and see what the uh, the outcome is. Okay, so we are going to acquire the state. We're going to take Moravia. Proceed. No, oh, we would have been one over anyway. And then we need to actually, you know, offer them the peace. Which we can't do for a month. In the meantime, all of you lot can head home. Marvellous. We didn't lose any money. And there we go. Acquire Bohemia, acquire Moravia. Germany has grown. Now, does this really piss everyone off? Let's get speed four. We'll just keep going a little bit. <laughs> Nothing's happening yet, and while we're at peace, this will tick down even faster, so we're going to need 11 months before that goes away. So you'll have to join me in the next episode to see if it does indeed go away or not. So thank you very much for watching. In the meantime, if you have enjoyed this series, then please do hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, then do consider subscribing. And if you have any tips or advice for me, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.